Welcome everybody to BFG. This is Women on Wednesdays. Claire Hi. takes over. <laughs> this is Claire our very finally first takes trial over. run. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The moment we've all been waiting for. Right. And today I have the pleasure of welcoming Catherine to the channel. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Catherine. It's great to see you again. Um, and for for everybody listening, Catherine is someone that the Aftermath Foundation helped in June 2021 escape from the Sea Organization and start a new life. And so, Catherine, I am, of course, you're a, a dear, dear friend, um, but also I thought it would be great for us to catch up and you can fill people in on what you're doing now, how life has been, things of that nature. Um, in the description to this video below, I will put links to interviews you did with um, both Aaron Smith-Levin on Growing Up in Scientology, as well as Chris Shelton, um, both of whom you covered your s parts of your story yeah. with pretty extensively. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll kick this off. Um, my first question was going to be regarding some of your craziest experiences while you were in Scientology. <laughs> and it occurred to me, at least, that I think something you haven't talked about much is your experiences with disconnection while you yeah. were in the Sea Organization. So I figured I would give you the floor and let you tell your story. Yeah. So I wanted to tell... I wanted to tell the story of um, basically what I went through before before I had to disconnect from my mom and my sister. And that was in that started in 2007. So what happened was in 2007, um, my sister contacted me and she she said, "Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm coming to LA for a few days, and I wanted to see you for the weekend." And um, backdrop on this um, I thought that I was under the impression that she was still a Scientologist my mom was still a Scientologist um, they had both been on staff before for many years they my mom went on and off staff a couple times and my sister was on for a very long time she was actually in the OSA office <laughs> In oh Portland. wow yeah yeah she was the DSA director of special affairs for public relations in Portland. And she was on that post for many years. Um, and then, and then she, and then they decided she wasn't qualified for OSA after being there forever and put her on another post. She didn't really like that. And then she went off staff. So, okay. but, and how, so when this was happening in 2007, how long had you been in the C organization? I had been in the C org since 1994. And okay. I had seen them, I had gone to visit them in Portland one time since I've been in the Sea Org in 1997. In 13 years, one time. Yeah, in 1997. <laughs> I went for four days for Christmas and I was actually supposed to go for a week and that was cut short at the last minute and some something came up and it's like, oh no, you have to cut your leave short. And Great. I had to call my mom and tell her not to go to the airport and stuff and pick me up and she was very upset about that um, understandably yeah exactly so I actually saw her a few other times after that she came to LA briefly when she was working and she was like traveling around selling sunglasses or something and and she happened to be in LA so I got to see her for like overnight I got to see her and I think that was maybe twice since 1997 like between 1997 and 2007 Wow and I hadn't seen my sister. I saw my sister once. No, actually, I saw her twice because she came to L.A. Um, when she was still on staff, she came to L.A. and she was doing some training for a little while. So she was at the pack base and she was doing some stuff on, on the, with that. Um, so I saw her. But so in 2007, they were no longer, neither your mom nor your sister were staff any longer. Right. Exactly. Okay. And they hadn't. All right. And they hadn't gone into the org for ages or gone to any events or anything, which I didn't really know because they were. When I asked them about it, they were very vague, and my mom would be like, "Oh no, I didn't go to the last event because I was busy." 
or I haven't gone back on course yet, but I'm going to. So it's like that. So it was like, I suspected something was going on, but I wasn't really sure. And, and I somehow convinced, I convinced like the, the, uh, the ethics officer to let me go. And cause they, they were like, they were asking me, well, is, is your, are they still Scientologists or like they were on staff and like stuff with that. And I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm trying to try to get them to be more active more active in Scientology, right? Yes. Which just means <laughs> you're going to course, you're going in the org, you're going to the events, you're paying whatever money towards the bridge. So yeah, so I gave them the impression that I was going to do that, which I was, I was, I was planning on doing something with that because I'm like, oh yeah, I want to get them more active, right? Yeah. So. So it was just your sister that came <clears throat> to LA or well, your sister and your mom? <laughs> Yeah. I thought that it was just my sister. So <laughs> so we planned this weekend, and she was going to pick me up, and we were going to go and stay in a hotel and go and do some stuff around L.A. for the weekend. So I didn't end up um, getting out until, like, late Saturday afternoon because something, of course, <laughs> something came up, and I was actually up most of the night before, and then no one had looked at my like 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 you have to like to do anything like uh, in 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 Scientology or in the sewer when you're on staff you do a, a whole submission right a completed staff work saying okay this is why I want to go this is all the information these are all the numbers I can be contacted with but all the numbers I can be contacted um, through and and this is who I'm going with and yeah they're totally cool and you know they're not and like anti-Scientology or anything. For you. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, say that again. How many people had to approve that for you to be able to um, see your see. sister? So, one, two, at least five or six people. Five or six it had people to go through, just to go visit your sister. Yeah, exactly. Had to go yes. through my senior, my senior, senior, the, you know, DC. Deputy commanding officer internal, um, and then and then to HCO. A whole bureaucracy, in yeah. other words. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so you finally get it approved, and then what happens? Yeah, so I finally get it approved, and then so I leave and I go um, to the birthing building to get my stuff together and pack like an overnight bag or whatever, and and, uh, and then. Um, I called my sister. I gave her the address. I didn't have a cell phone or anything. I don't think I had a cell phone at that time, did I? No. No, no, no. I didn't have a cell phone. So I, I think I called her from the org, gave her the address, told her when I would be ready, and went and got my stuff together, and then left the birthing building with her. Um, she had rented a car, so we drove together. And um, it was really good seeing her. I was like, I was really happy to see her, obviously. I've been a while I'm sure um, but she seemed right away to me she seemed really nervous like a lot more nervous than usual and I was kind of like what's going on but I was really tired I hadn't seen her in such a long time I hadn't interacted with her that much so I'm like okay well maybe she's just like this right so then we went and had lunch really late lunch talked for like two hours or something and then and then we went to drive to the hotel because she had rented a room and I think it was like an hour long drive or something. Um, somehow we got there really late. I don't know where all the extra time was in there, but we got there really late. I must have left later than I thought from the org, but because I remember because I was so tired, I fell asleep on the way to the hotel. And she kept saying, I have a surprise for you. I have a surprise for you once we... <laughs> When we get to the hotel, I start, I'm surprised. I'm like, that's great. Okay, let me just sleep while we get to the hotel. Okay, good. I want to go to sleep. So so then I slept on the way. Then, and then we got to the hotel, and I'm all like, groggy, taking my stuff out. And we go to the room, and and we open up the door and go inside the room. And she's like, I have a surprise for you. I'm like, okay, stop saying that. <laughs> and then my mom came out of the bathroom. Wow. And I was like, oh, my God. I didn't know she was coming. I'm like, wow, wow, this is great. We're all three together. I was like so happy. And yes. 
And then but you um, quickly learned there was an agenda, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty quickly, actually. Yeah, there was a whole whole agenda on me. And I'm like, I'm I'm okay. So I've been in the Sea Org now. How many years was it? Would that 13. be? That would be yeah, thirteen years. I'm I'm bad with math. I grew up on a cult, on a cult, right? That's what that's, <laughs> that's what everybody says. <laughs> Now, now, you're going to be great. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I've been in New York 13 years. I had, like, my ups and downs. and But at that time, I felt like I was doing well. I didn't feel bad about my post or where I was working or anything. I felt pretty good. So so I wasn't in, like, some some frame of mind where I'm, like, I don't want to be here anymore. This sucks. What the heck, right? Yeah. And plus it was like 2007. So this was right before the basics came out. This was like two weeks. The basic, basic Scientology yeah. books being yeah, redone. being re-released yeah. in all their splendor and glory and minus all the semicolons and beautifully formatted and everything. So yes, that was, yeah, literally two weeks before that. So... I was in a pretty okay state of mind, which was unfortunate because I probably would have left a lot, <laughs> a lot sooner if I would have been feeling a little bit bad. I, I, I may have left, but okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Hey, we, we all have those elephant size rear view mirrors. Right? So. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Here we are today, so it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah, that's what I have to remind myself when I go like, God, why didn't I? go when I was like, you know, 10 years ago. Why didn't I go 15 years ago? Okay, well, I'm here now. Okay, I'm, I'm everything's good yes. now, so whatever. Anyway, so, so yeah, so she came out, we're all like, oh, you know, huggy, huggy, all happy to see each other, just, and then we just started talking about random stuff, and, and um, if you know my mom, she can, she can talk, <laughs> she can talk for quite a while, so, and yes. if you get all three of us together, we can definitely talk about whatever for hours and hours. So we were talking. And especially you hadn't seen them in how long? How yeah, many years exactly. Ago? So I hadn't, I hadn't seen my mom probably, I don't remember when that was the last time I saw her. It was at least a few years since I'd seen her because I don't remember right. when she came to LA, but it was, it was at least a couple years. And so, so you're all getting caught up. When did things go south? Um, after a few hours, she started to ask questions. Um, she was starting to ask things where I was like, what? Where do you get that from? Where do you get that from? Like, I can't even now recall a lot of the conversation, but <clears throat> she was definitely... Was it about, like, working conditions? or? Yeah, it was some of that, and it was, like, an overall, like, like I don't understand why this is happening oh she definitely brought up she was bringing up a disconnection for whatever reason because she was always paranoid about disconnection like up until the point that I disconnected from her she was paranoid about disconnection understandably so now right yes so she was like you know there's all this stuff being changed in Scientology because you know it, the, the, the uh, information about the the new books coming out and whatever and, and every, things have been revised and she's like why can't that policy be just gotten rid of like all this other stuff is being done and and what's up with all these buildings these new buildings are being like what's the point of new buildings and I'm just like where are you, where are you getting this <laughs> like right. where are you getting this from because she was hitting me with like all this stuff that of course I hadn't read like any or seen like any other information other than what was being given to us it's not like i was on the internet you had no media yeah, access, i had no no yeah yeah and the, i think it's extremely isolated yeah. being in the sea organization yeah so it's not n no surprise that you had no idea what she was talking exactly, about <laughs> because that was the time that was the time when nobody had any <clears throat> internet access or anything like that now it's like now it's like a usual thing to have internet access but there's so much that's filtered like you right. can't type Scientology. You can't even, you can't even look up the website of a lot of the orgs. Like if you type like Scientology Madrid or Scientology Spain or whatever, it'll block you. 
because of what's online about that org. And there's a lot of them. Were, like weren't you telling me um, when you first got out that they had actually even stopped you from looking at the OSA? That's right. The Stan, Stan League. League. You can't access site. the Stan League site. Yes. And when it first came Which for, out, for everybody yeah. listening that doesn't know what that is, that's the, the hate sites where they say all kinds of false things about anyone who has anything to say about their experiences in Scientology, they attack them through the Stan League. Yeah, that's right. But it's just crazy to me that they wouldn't even let you read their own I know. material. And the, the <laughs> funny thing is, is that when it was first, when that website first went up, you could access that. And I even had somebody from OSA tell me to look at that site after all this stuff happened with my family and this whole thing that I'll go into in a minute. But yes. I had somebody from OSA tell me, oh, you should check out this new website. It has like all this information about, you know, various people. And <laughs> so I, I had gone on there, you know, I read all about Mike Rinder. I read all about Mark. I read, uh, I don't think I'd looked at you guys at that time because I didn't, I, I didn't know you. I just looked at people that I knew. Yes. And then months, all right. a few months later, <laughs> crazy. a few months later, you couldn't access it anymore. And I'm like, what's up with that? <laughs> so crazy. All right, so let, so back to our story. You're it's 2007. You're in LA visiting with your mom and your sister for the first time in several years, and she starts. At, your mom starts asking questions that are making you nervous about what she's been. So what what happens from there? Um, well, she 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 proceeded to get like more and more and more emotional about the whole thing, and I was just I was so tired. I was so like overwhelmed by everything she was saying that I was just like, okay, you know, I don't, I don't want to talk about this anymore tonight. And it was like, by that time, it was probably like five in the morning or something. Cause we've been oh talking, yeah, we've been talking four hours. <laughs> so wow. I was like, mom, I really want to go to sleep. <laughs> so we kind of ended the conversation. We went to sleep. Um, I woke up the next morning and my, my sister had, was not in the room and and she'd gone out to like get us coffee and stuff and then I just kind of got ready you know shower got dressed whatever and we were kind of like just talking about whatever and then and then she started bringing up this stuff again and I'm just like oh god what am I gonna do with her and I'm and I'm thinking to myself like oh my god I'm gonna have to do like a whole handling you know PTS handling all this which for everyone listening pts means you're a potential trouble right. source you're connected to someone who's against scientology right. and causes all kinds of fallout if you're a sea Org member to have to go through those handlings yeah, yeah I, I i was doing i that, that's what i did most of my most of my sea Org career was after that was i did pts handlings it's like i did everything i'm sorry everything you can think of <laughs> With regards to that, I won't get into it because it's just a bunch of mumbo jumbo for everybody, but I did yep. everything. Anyway, so, um, so yeah, I'm thinking that. And then my sister, <clears throat> my sister shows up and she says, and then we all three start talking and she's, and she says, well, you know, um, what started me on this? Oh, because, oh, let me back up for a second. So one of the things my mom brought up was, um, the fact that I had been um, physically attacked by somebody um, while I was working in this in this building, like just a few years before, it was probably like 2003, 2004 or something. I think it's 2004 when this happened. And wasn't it your boss yeah. that physically yeah. attacked you? Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was because, and it was really par for the course right. in the Sea Org, right? And it was because I didn't want to do something that was off policy. <laughs> Oh my That's gosh. Why. So basically you were saying this is not in accordance with Scientology teachings and she physically yeah. attacked you. That's right. She was literally, she was like, she was like hitting me and like kicking me. And I was, I was not, I then, yeah, that didn't go over well with me. I wasn't into, I, I, I can't take physical and stuff at all. I just. No, as and you shouldn't. But so how did your mom know about that? Okay, so how she knew was that um, there was a, a, a person that was working in the same area. Her name was Amory Grant. You know Amory, right? I think you do. Yes, um, I do. I've never met her in person, but I know of her. Yeah, so. she was she was a really good friend yes. of mine when I was in the Sea Org. 
and she blew in oh oh that must have been 2003 that this happened because she blew in 2003 so this is before she blew okay um, and she had witnessed yeah this yeah, she was there wow. she was there and so she had written about this and put it online and my sister was looking for uh, my sister was looking online for anything she could find about me and she found this and and they contacted Anne Marie and my mom got her to do like a whole a whole explanation of it like written explanation of what happened and stuff right so then my sister told me in the hotel room she uh, she was like well the reason the how we found this all out was because we talked to your friend Anne Marie and I'm like are you kidding me how did you talk to Anne Marie and I was I was a- and be, because of course after Anne Marie escaped and got out of there that's it you never had seen her again that's right and now we're four years later that's right that's right and yeah. and i i had even done uh oh right before this <laughs> right before uh this whole thing happened i had actually done a pts handling on Anne marie oh wow. isn't that funny yeah <laughs> so uh, it, it, it gets better so so then I was like, how did, how did you find Anne Marie? How did you talk to her? Oh, we, I found her online. And my sister was like, you know, I, I know I can really get in trouble for this and I could get declared. And, and she was all going into that. And, and I was like, I can't believe you talked to Anne Marie. And then, of course, I, being trained in the wonderful, the wonderful technology <laughs> of Scientology, I went into, well, let me just tell you about Anne Marie, you know. And all this stuff that I knew about her and whatever and whatever trouble she'd been in. To, to negate what right. Anne Marie had exactly. told your mom and sister. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Understood. Exactly. So then we're kind of just like sitting there sort of wrapping up the conversation a little bit, but still kind of intense about the whole thing, right? <clears throat> and we had the door to the hotel room open because it was June and it was it was really nice out. So or no, it wasn't June, it was end of May. But it was really warm and everything. So I turn. So I, for some reason, something attracted me by the door, and I turn and I look, and Amory's in the door, <laughs> <laughs> standing there. Surprise at the door. again! And I'm like, what? Wow. The hell is going on here? So at what at what point in all this did you start to think, oh boy, I'm I'm getting in a hot pickle here? Oh, that was the night before. The night before, oh, okay. I already knew. So you already were yeah, you were already, already pretty knew. far down the rabbit hole, and yeah, I already knew I should have called somebody and whatever the night before, but I was just like, I can't, I can't, I can't take anymore. I just have to go to sleep and think about this tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> and understandably, you said you'd had very little sleep. Yeah. At least in my yeah. in my experience, you never your best problem yeah. solver when you're so yeah. exhausted, like Seerg members are frequently. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I wasn't. So you see Anne Marie. So what happens? So next? I see her and, and, and then I, I really lose it. So I stand and I'd apologize to her. When I finally found her after I escaped. Right. So I stand up and I close the door in her face. Cause I'm like, Oh wow. She's a declared SP. You know what I mean? She's, I've seen her declare yep. and you know, she, I, I was like, okay, she used to be my friend and she totally betrayed me and she left her post and she blew and I thought that was a very bad thing. Yep. Oh, it was a good Seerg member, I don't know what to say. You know what I mean? Right. So, like we all were exactly. at various different points. <laughs> exactly. And she was there with yeah. her son at that, that point. Her little her son was like probably two years old or something. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's a, he's a cutie. His name is Orion. I don't know if you've seen nice. pictures on our Facebook or anything, but yeah, he's, he's a really cute kid. I mean, he's not a kid anymore, but <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> so, so then I close the door and lock it. And then I, and then I just started yelling and <laughs> start yelling at my mom. Cause I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like, what are you trying to do to me? <laughs> she's, she's a declared person. So you're bringing a declared person here. Thanks mom. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a and lot. what was your mom's response? She was like, well, I'm, 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 I'm actually just trying to help you. And, you know, I really think you should, I mean, she was not saying this calmly at all. She was really, 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 really what riled up. So, uh, yeah. 
you know, I think you should, you should take a, can, can you take a sabbatical and like think about things? I'm like, no, I can't take a sabbatical. I'm like, I don't even know what that means. But at that time I was like, what does that even mean? <laughs> like, no, I, I'm, I can't now, now take time off to think about things and go and visit you and stuff after all this. Right. Yeah, it's not really she work. she had good intentions. Yeah, unfortunately. No, she totally like you did. said, the timing was not great. Yeah. yeah, she totally did. She told me a lot. I mean, we've obviously now we've talked extensively, and she told me a lot about this time period and <clears throat> what she had done and what she had set up. And you know, she's like, I brought an empty suitcase in in case you wanted to, um, in case you, in case I could convince you to come with me. I brought an empty suitcase to put your stuff in and like all this stuff, right? So. I know that her wow. intentions were good. It was just the execution of it was like very, it was very jarring for me at the time, extremely jarring. Yeah. And it continued to be up until I left, right? Yeah. So, so then, um, I, oh yeah. So then I, I just told, I told her, okay, you're going to, you're going to take me back right now. We're going to talk to somebody. And she's like, well, what is that going to do? I'm like, okay, well, you've told me everything you're thinking. And so we're going to go talk to somebody. And I was like, I'll get her to talk to somebody in Oso, right? So then throw my stuff on my bag, marched out of the room to the car. And, and Amory is still there. And I'm like, just ignoring her. I'm like, I'm not going to talk to her. Get yeah. in the car. My sister comes. My mom comes. I get my mom to get in the car finally she's like standing there like she's not going to and I'm like no let's go so then we leave the hotel and <clears throat> we're driving and my mom is still kind of going on a roll and my sister's like really like shaken and upset and I'm like okay let's all just not talk right now and just let her drive <laughs> she was she was very upset so I'm sure so yeah so we're driving uh, for a little bit and my mom's like oh, I get something to eat before we do whatever we're gonna do and I'm like okay fine let's we could stop in a little while so then we stopped at a place and got something to eat and is and at one point she was like I need to take a walk and so she takes a walk around the block and I'm like I'm gonna make a phone call so, so then I went and I called um, I actually I tried to call Kirsten <laughs> External Kirsten Catano. Yep. We've, heard, we've been talking a lot yeah. about her lately Kirsten from OSA. Catano. At that time, she was Kirsten Jari, but now she's Kirsten Pedersen. So, yes. She's married like three times. Anyway, um, so then I tried to call her. Um, couldn't get through to her. Didn't want to like alarm the other the receptionist. And so I'm like, oh, well, then can I speak to the port captain? <laughs> port captain at that time. And, and the port captain is the person who deals with public relations right. for Scientology. That's yes. right. So at that time it was Hillary Royce. I don't know if that name is familiar to you at all. She's not she's not in this. I've heard anymore. a lot about Hillary. Yeah. She's in Portland now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Actually I looked her up on Facebook. She's still she's still in Scientology and everything. So I'm like Yes. Whatever. No, I'm aware of yeah. that too. <laughs> oh. The network runs deep. <laughs> right. Osa, we are everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> We're everywhere and we know everything. Whoever you think we're talking to, we probably yeah, are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and even people that we that you don't know that we're talking to. And anyway. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, oh, that's crazy. So you call Hillary. Did she, do you get through to her? I don't get through to Hillary either. So I'm like, okay, can you put me through to <clears throat> my senior senior, right? Who is uh, who is the uh, he was in charge of the whole states bureau or a whole states branch. So then I spoke to him and I and I told him, okay, I have a big problem with, uh, I, I have a family situation and, and I really need to talk to Kirsten and we're coming there in a little while and can you please reach her and tell her and you talk to her and he's like, okay. So that was that was it. I didn't, it wasn't like a long conversation. I didn't tell him anything. <clears throat> and so so then we leave the restaurant. Um, I didn't know how far away we were. We were like over an hour away from the org and I thought we were, I thought it was a shorter time, right? So by the time we got there, everybody was freaked out. And <laughs> they thought you'd been, they thought you were long gone yeah, probably. Yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so then, excuse me. <clears throat> so then I get there and security is waiting for me. And, um, and the, uh, 
the uh, the guy who runs the states is waiting for me because he's like whatever and <clears throat> and they take me like oh so my mom so they didn't want to drive up to the building so then they drop me a few blocks a few blocks away and I'm like okay stay here <laughs> stay here right <laughs> right I'm gonna go get somebody <laughs> so then I go to the building um, I meet up with with Kirsten and I go to Osai, tell her the whole story, tell her everything that happened. And then she's like, okay, well, let's go talk to them. I'm like, okay. So then it was me, Kirsten, um, Lynn Farney. I know, you know, you know who Lynn Farney is, right? The... No, I, yeah, <laughs> he's the, I know. I've he's the, Farney. yeah, he's the DA officer, dead agent officer in Osai, which basically means <clears throat> he knows all this stuff stuff about anybody that you can say like oh well tell me about claire headley oh yeah let me just tell you about claire headley and her crimes and all this like whatever he, like yeah knows and all for this and stuff. for everyone listening dead agent is a hubbard policy basically where anyone that has anything negative to say about scientology they gather material on them yeah, to the make person. them look bad and therefore make them quote unquote dead to yeah. you Right. So you wouldn't listen to me because they've told you a whole bunch of lies right. about me. Right. Yeah. So that's that's um, what is it in real terms? Ad, ad hominem attack. Yeah, that, that's he's in charge of that. Yes. <laughs> Which is the very yes. best argument against something. Right. <laughs> you don't. Right. You, you don't explain the subject. You don't explain anything else about it. You just attack the person. I mean, it makes perfect sense. It really works. Yeah, right. Quote unquote. Right. <laughs> So so the, so you go with Lynn and Kirsten, Lynn, Kirsten to go see your and, mom or your sister. And Hillary. <laughs> okay, and Hillary. Yeah. And my biggest question is, were your mom and sister still there nope. waiting? <laughs> no. Why am I not they surprised? Were, oh they my were smart goodness. And they took off. And nice. <clears throat> so I tried and, so I and sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just gonna say I um for the sake of this story. So this was 2007. Yeah. And I'm sure the resulting handling was you had to disconnect from your mom and your sister because they wanted to get you out of there. Yeah, but it, 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 it gets a, little, a bit better. I need to tell a little bit more. Okay. All um, right. We'll cover so, more. I, I just want to make sure for today's episode, we also have time for me to ask you the follow-up question oh, okay, the better news okay good so okay. I'll, I'll i i can shorten the rest of it I, I can shorten the rest of it so okay yeah they were gone um we spent some time trying to find them we we it was to figure out where the hotel was because i did i'm like i have no idea where we were sorry <laughs> i don't know la i've only lived here since 1994 <laughs> in this little you were you so know, tired you slept on the whole way there how would you possibly know yeah, where you're it stuck was in this little like you know two mile two mile radius of <laughs> You don't know anything. Yes. So, so yeah, we found the hotel. We went outside the hotel. We tried to find them, whole thing. We went to the airport the next day trying to run into them and and through whatever connections, whatever, however OSA does it, they found out that, that, that they were with um, some other people. They were with Astra and a few other people, I don't remember. But definitely Astra was there. Okay, and for, for, for everyone listening, <laughs> Astra Woodcraft was a friend of both of ours actually yeah. and is a very good friend of mine now but she had very uh well she had left the sea organization because she got pregnant and they were trying to force her to deal with that differently than she intended luckily she was a strong woman and got out of there and then spoke out very publicly about scientology so at, i think at that time she was likely on the top five list of enemies of yeah. scientology if i'm not mistaken Something like that, yeah yeah. Okay. So they were they were talking to Astra, yeah. which didn't bode well for for you, I'm sure. No, unfortunately. No. No, I didn't. Um. So yeah. So we went to the airport and we were waiting for them, and then we got a call. I was with Hillary, and she got a call from Kirsten saying, "Nope, leave because they're just get out of there. They're with other people." So I didn't see my mom or my. What, what were your feelings at that point? I was so freaked out. I was just like. I was in shock, really, because I thought 
that they were still in Scientology, you know, they were going to get active again, everything was good. And then everything just flipped on me. And I was just like, whoa, like, what just happened? <laughs> Plus, yeah. I'm like, how am I going to, how am I going to see them again? Like, what, what's, <laughs> this is not good. I, I don't know how am I ever going to see them again? Yeah, that's, that's a tough spot to be in yeah. for sure. Yeah. Like at that time, it didn't even, it didn't even cross my mind that I was going to leave. I was just like, of course I'm not going to leave. You know what I mean? I'm, why would I do that? Like, I have to handle them. Yeah. It's, it's strange to me how some of those events <laughs> actually end up kind of pushing you deeper in. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah, it, it really did. Yeah, I mean, it, it did. It could have gone both ways, obviously, but in this case, unfortunately, it didn't. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely too, it was too jarring. It was too much of a, it was too much of a reality shift too fast. And I just, you know, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it. So. Yeah, understood. She ended up, um, I won't go into all the details further than that, but, but my mom ended up getting connected to uh, Anonymous shortly after that because that's when the whole Which, anonymous thing happened like six months later yeah something. and ironically yeah no i think i we've talked about this outside of this interview of course but ironically anonymous organized a press conference where a letter from your mom was read out and mark and i were both at that pre right. press conference small small world i mean who would have thought you know that's right but anyway that's go right because so he he, yeah. he remembered he remembered my name from that press conference so later on when I when I contacted him and I was we were texting he's like he's like god that sounds familiar and he remembered it <laughs> yes he did some internet sleuthing yeah. to yeah. put the pieces together <laughs> yes yeah. yeah, so all right so so what happened um so then um yeah she got connected with anonymous she was going to come at some point and on one of the anonymous anonymous protests and she was going to be outside my building protesting and I was like no you're not doing that because I was still talking to her for like a year after this happened because I was trying to handle her right so yeah. I was like no you're not doing that you're not doing that I convinced her not to do that and me and somebody from OSA saw actually saw her and spent a day with her she came to LA and so you had somebody from OSA yeah. with you while you were spending time with your mom and the purpose of that was for them to make sure you didn't escape with her am i right yeah that was the purpose but the purpose i thought <laughs> was for them yep. to help me handle her so so you had a handler yeah. in other words yeah exactly yeah. exactly so perspectives change but the the basic <laughs> facts are the yeah, same <laughs> yeah exactly exactly yeah um so then we had a whole conversation for like a day and it didn't really, I mean, it didn't resolve anything. Like we felt better and we were like, you know, talking to each other again civilly, but it didn't resolve anything. And then <clears throat> I somehow convinced her to not talk to me for a few months while I get to special auditing, whatever. And then I did that and then I talked to her again and nothing had changed. And then, and then she sent a letter she sent a letter to to Karen to Kareen Powell about the whole thing, and she put it online. She put it on, you know, these wonderful, uh, you know, anti Scientology websites. And yes. and then so it was like, so you know, people in OSA and the MA or whatever were like, well, what what are you gonna do? What do you want to do about this? And finally, I'm just like, okay, fine, I'm I'm gonna not talk to her anymore. Yeah, and. Ugh. And and so this was now two thousand nine. This was August two thousand eight. Okay. Yeah. So I spent about a year. And so you disconnected from your mom and your sister. Yeah. Because you had. To. Yeah, I hadn't. I hadn't spoken to my sister since um, since the whole that whole incident happened. I called her and spoke spoke to her one time, and then I didn't talk to her after that. I was just trying to handle my mom, and so when I didn't talk to my sister and when I disconnected from my mom, I was like, okay, well, I can't talk to my sister either because they're connected and whatever. Right. So yeah, that was how that went. Wow. Yeah. Oh boy. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <that was laughs> like I said, here we are now. Not a fun time. It's, 
No, so, I know yeah. the the disconnection the disconnection practice in Scientology is just so yeah. destructive. Yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and even and and more than that, it's like the way they get you to think about about not talking to your family anymore. Like 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 I said, I was like, Oh of course, of course I'm not gonna go with them. Okay, given the choice of, you know, leave the Sea Org and leave everybody I know and my job and my friends and everything I've known for thirteen years and go with my mom who I thought at this point was crazy or something because she was doing all this. I was like, I'm not going to do that. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's a, it's a great example, unfortunately, of, of how the, the mindset of a Scientologist yeah. it just tends to shut down yeah. when negative information is coming in. A, a, a more gradient approach might have been a little more gentle, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> might've had different results, yeah. but Hey, you know, she, she loves you yeah. and, and she had your, best intentions and speaking from my perspective as a mom there's no length I wouldn't go to to protect my children right. so I can I can absolutely understand as I've told you before yeah yeah <laughs> I, and, and I remember when you first when you first got out and we were talking and you had said you didn't want to talk to your mom you weren't ready for that yet and I just I was just trying to gently encourage yeah. you yeah, that's right. to hear her out that's right. Yeah, we, we've talked quite a bit since then, so a lot has been... That's awesome. A lot has been resolved. What, what, <laughs> yes, one of these episodes, maybe if it's all right with you, we can kind of show what happened, because that was an incredible moment. Oh, yeah, because we have the video. When your sister videoed, huh. yeah, your sister videoed you reuniting, yeah, I was should. crying. We should. It was, I, an, yeah, it was I, incredible. I'd, be, I'd, I'd love to show that. I'm glad we videoed it. That would be awesome. Really cool. Because because after all, that's the that's the great yeah. part of the story yeah, exactly. is you you being able to reconnect with old friends and family yeah. and all of that. Yeah, yeah it, 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 it's funny because all uh, a lot of my closest friends are the are the ones that 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 left. Like I I still had friends in there, right? But a lot of the people over the years that I consider my closest friends just left. Like before this whole incident with my mom in 2007, I had a friend, like my best friend had to leave because her dad had written a, 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 an anti-Scientology book and they made her leave. And she's like, I don't want to leave. And they made her leave. And now she's not in Scientology anymore. We talk all the time. So, and she's like, nice. yeah, I'm, I'm a chappy or not. <laughs> not doing any of that. <laughs> And it's the same with, you know, it's the same with Emory. It's the same with, you know, I have like a lot of people I, <laughs> I really like. So, so it's good to know that they're out. Yes. But also absolutely. knowing that there's still well, like, there's people in there that I really wish I could get out. <laughs> Just like. Yeah. Well, well, that brings me to, to a question I have. What was most helpful to you that helped you get out? Most helpful. Oh. The most helpful thing, if I just, if I, if I had to narrow it down to one thing, it was, it was speaking to somebody um, who's outside of Scientology. Like for me, like, that makes sense. I, I know everybody would be different and, and maybe it'd be for somebody, it might be okay. They start talking to their ex Scientology friend or something, but I was so, I was so like, I'm not talking to any ex Scientology. I'm not talking to any former Sea Org members or declared people or whatever, you know what I mean? I was just like, I was so like, oh no, they're bad people or whatever. And so speaking to somebody who'd, their only knowledge of Scientology was that I had gone into it. That was all I knew. And, and he, I, I actually tried to, to like, um, you say disseminate to him. When I first got in, which means to try and get him to become yeah, a Scientologist as well. Yeah, people would say recruit, well, right? but recruit to us means joining staff, and so I, yeah, right, it feels weird to say. Yeah, proselytize yeah, Scientology. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. So I tried that when because I was because I got in um, up in up in Oregon. I lived in Silverton. That's how I met him. I went to high school in Silverton. I met him through his sister. I went to high school with, and. Um, so I started in Portland and while I was still living in Silverton and while I still knew him and while I was still around him. So, um, I tried to tell him how great it all was. And he was just like, 
okay, this sounds kind of weird, but I'm willing to hear it from you. Like, I just want to know if you're interested in something, I'm, you know, I want to hear about it type of thing. But all along, he was just like, uh, no, this sounds weird. <laughs> it sounds like a scam. This doesn't sound good. So then when I, when I, when I found him again, it wasn't even with the intention of, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find somebody to talk to desperately so I can leave Scientology, right? It was like, oh my God, right. I found this person that I've been looking for for years <laughs> through, through, yes. you know, thank you, Facebook. <laughs> yeah, right. Thank you, Facebook. <laughs> and thank you, COVID, because I was <laughs> in my apartment with access to the internet that was unfiltered. Yes. Nice. So, and uh, yeah. For them, it was an unfortunate series of events. For you, it was fortunate. That's right. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, and that was, it, it, it was really helpful because it was, it was, it, like his viewpoint about stuff was, was from, from the, uh, from the viewpoint of, he doesn't know anything about it except what I've told him or what I've said or whatever. And even if, you know, he, he studied up on it and everything and without, without telling me, <laughs> he read quite a bit of yeah, stuff online. But he didn't and, download. Yeah, on exactly. You. He didn't, because he knew yeah. that the minute that he was like, Oh, well, you know, I watched going, going clear. I'd be like, Oh, uh, no, nope, click. Bye. Right. <laughs> yeah. I would freak out. So he didn't put any of that on me. It was just, it was always like, you know, trying to find out like, okay, well, what do you think about this? And what do you think about this? And you know, this in like comparing it to an abusive relationship, that was helpful. And comparing yeah. it to um, what happens when people get trafficked. And I was just like, wow, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. But doing it in like a very like gentle approach and not like, oh, you were trafficked. <laughs> Or right. you're basically in an abusive relationship. Yeah. And it was softer questions like, have you thought about X, Y, Z? Yeah. Have you considered? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And and it was also like like I had taken I had taken a really vital step um, in in telling him that I was I was tired of things and I wasn't happy. And I just decided to just, OK, I'm just going to tell him where I'm at. Cause I wasn't happy at that point. I really wasn't. I mean, I hadn't been for a long I'm time. Sure. So I'm just like, okay, this is what's going on. And, and, and once you open that door and admit it, it's kind of this, there's no turning back. Yeah, exactly. By my experience. Exactly. You can be miserable for years and just not allow yourself to admit that yeah, to yourself. That's right. And that's what but I did the minute for years. You do. <laughs> that's what I did for yeah. years because I knew right. once I once I went down the road of of oh I have doubts and I feel bad and be like, you know, sex check conditions whatever to, you know, quote handle me. And I'm like, I don't yes. want to go down that road. If I'm going to go down that road and decide that I feel bad about this, I'm going to myself decide myself in my own mind without anyone influencing me if i'm going to to you know leave or stay cuz i was thinking yes. at first to even just leave the sea org and like the right way right but then i but then i thought about it and i'm like no that's just it's so it's so degrading what they do to you when you when you say mm -hmm. you want to leave it's really degrading yes and i'm like i don't want that I don't want any of that. I'm not interested in any of that. And and for the for the sake of people listening that might not know what you're referring to, for all intents and purposes, if you say you want to leave Scientology, the instant accusation is because you've done bad things that would make you want to leave. Right. And in, and then you go into a long onslaught of required confessions, the result of which will be allegedly that you you're going to stay exactly exactly that's the end yeah. result is that they to, to to make you stay the end result is not okay now you can go well, i mean often it is so essentially but... by saying you want to leave you'd be entering the hamster wheel yeah exactly for god only knows yeah. how long <laughs> yes. plus it plus they'd probably you know they they, they would have done this to me in columbus 
And then if I still said, okay, no, no, I want to go back to LA to do even more. Mm -hmm. And for me, it would be even more than a regular person because I have all these one, you know, these wonderful connections. My mom has declared, um, my sister is, you know, ex Scientologist and it would just be like, it would have been really bad. So I didn't yeah. want to well, hats off to you for taking matters in your own <laughs> hands. I'm so grateful that oh you my. did. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. And so are, so are a lot of other people. Because I, I feel like I, I maintain my own dignity. You know what I mean? Like, yes. And plus, I left, I when I left, I left in a state of mind, like, or a state of, like, my, my post and my job was going really well. Like, <laughs> really, really well. So it yeah. wasn't like, oh, you, you know, I messed up and, and, and the, and, and the reaction is, oh, I want to get out of here. I was like, no, everything's going well. So, yeah, although they're, That's I, it. although I'm sure they, they all said, you know, how horrible I was after I left and how I, you know, I'm the reason for everything that's bad. I know that I did, that I was doing yeah. a good job. Yeah, as the saying goes, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words right. can never hurt me. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> and ha and so so for for today's interview, how are you doing now? Oh, I'm doing great. I I'm doing great. Awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm doing really great. I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> it just and, it, and it, one like, question I wanted to ask about life after Scientology. What would you say is something that really helped you adjust to life in the real world? Um, probably talking to people just about usual things, you know, reading things, reading things online, um, just, you know, watching a TV show <laughs> and just being able to. <laughs> Just like, but, but the biggest, the, the biggest thing is like having, having the freedom to do whatever you want to do. Like, yes. like I was like, when I could first drive and I was, uh, <laughs> cause I learned how to drive after <laughs> not knowing how to drive after 44 years. So yes, I used, uh, that was, that was super fun for me, by the way, yeah. teaching you to yeah, drive awesome. at the same time I was teaching my 15 year old to drive. <laughs> Yeah, and after I finally, you know, stopped being afraid of the freeway, it was. <laughs> but I, but I've come just, a like, long way, Rose, yeah, I, I would, Catherine. <laughs> I would just like sometimes I would just drive for an hour in whatever direction, just because I wanted to, and I'm like, I don't have to be anywhere, I don't have anyone to to you know, I don't have to go to a muster, I don't have to you know say where I am, I can go wherever I want, whenever I want, for however long I want, and do whatever I want. And it just, it, it felt so good, you know, go on walks, go on hikes, go bike riding, my wonderful electric bike, which, <laughs> which somebody helped nice. me obtain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. I mm. used to, I, I was like biking like 50 miles every weekend just because I could. That's that amazing. Great. I mean, I'm not now just because it's winter time, but <laughs> the summer I was, um, no, I forgot. Well, what, what was the question? Oh, what was the thing that, that helped do, me adjust yeah. the most? Yeah, I guess. I guess I yes. That. Yeah. The the other thing that's that's actually really helped me adjust is that I is certain things that I've read, like, um, I read the uh, Steve Hassan's book, um, Combat Combating uh, Cult Mind Control. Actually, I listened to the audio book twice now. And nice. That, I'll, I'll add that. I'll uh, add a link to that yeah, in do. this video. It's, it's very helpful because it's. It's amazing that that all these different groups they basically do the same thing. They <laughs> they operate the same yes. way. So yeah, that helped a lot. Um Jefferson Hawkins two of his book help, books helped a lot. His book on the that breaks awesome. down the ethics book, it's called Closing Minds. That's a nice. great one cuz he breaks it down in great detail all the conditions and the you know, the crimes and high crimes and Scientology and all this BS, PTS handling. Um, he just breaks down everything really well. Nice. And, That's awesome. Um, also, just hearing other people's stories and, and hearing stories, especially of what was going on at Int. Because where yes. I was working, um, I worked in upper middle management and I was there 
for 25 years. And and you were in the Hollywood Guarantee right. Building in Los Angeles, right. yeah. Whereas Mark and I were in Hemet, that's California, right. at the headquarters. That's right. Just so for clarification, yeah. So for a while, before Dave Miscavige got rid of like all of in management, you know, we would we would get our orders from Ent. We would hear from from various people there. I'm not going to mention all the or the different organizations because it's just going to a whole thing right now. But yes. that's who we would hear from. And then all of a sudden, you didn't hear from anybody. Everybody was gone. And it's just like this mystery of like, what the heck happened? And of course, you're yeah. not going to find out anything. So finding oh. out actually what happened with various people and specific people and people that left, people that are still there. And seeing that, how that all unfolded, just seeing like the truth of, of that, of how it all unfolded really helped because it's, because you're, you're given such a different story or no story when you're, when you're in the Sea Oregon, especially when you're at that level, because everything that was being done by the people in it just moved to LA and it's being done there with Dave Miscavige still doing his micromanaging and whatever. But, right. but you really see how it all, how the whole thing evolved for real, instead of just this mystery of, oh, there was these, you know, bunch of SPs and they were wrecking Int and they were wrecking everything. And so we got rid of them. You really understand what happened. So that's yeah, been really, that totally makes sense. Been really useful. And hearing, hearing stories, you know, of what happened to people at PAC, you know, hearing Aaron's whole story. I watched, I watched all the aftermath, um, all the aftermath episodes and I've watched like so many interviews of people just because I'm just like constantly like searching for other viewpoints because you're just given one viewpoint and one story for so long and told how all these people are just bad people and criminals and you know what I mean? And just, I mean, you hear their actual yeah. story and you're like, no, they're not. Sorry. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, hats off to you on the progress you've made. And I, I, I suppose for today, I would love to do another interview with you. Maybe we can do one, you know, periodically, Absolutely. if you don't mind yeah. just explaining things to people. But my, my last question for today is what advice might you give to somebody in, still in right now, maybe even watching this to help them accelerate their exit? My advice would be, um, you really need to find out things for yourself. Like if you have a question about something that's happening and you're in the Sea Org and you're like, why is this going on? Like Google it <laughs> or look at some of these, <laughs> look at, look at people's interviews. Like just start, start watching people's interviews and you're going to, you're going to hear the real stories of what is going on and why it's happening. And you're going to understand a lot more. And I guess the other thing would be if you can to read that, that book that combating cult mind control and find somebody, find somebody out of the, of the, that's not in, in the Sea Org, not maybe not necessarily not a Scientologist, but somebody, somebody you can talk to who you can confide in, who's not going to snitch on you. <laughs> yes. Not and gonna, who won't judge yeah. you for, Having different perspectives. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, I, I completely agree with that. I When I left, I was afraid to, to look at things initially. Yeah. And then I thought, well, you know, why can't I read a book right. and just hear other people's views right. and have that take what I agree with and discard what I don't agree exactly. with and ha have that help peel away the layers of the onion, so That's to speak. Right. That's right. That's exactly right. Like, like you should be able to to read and study and listen to whatever you want. It shouldn't be like something that's going to be bad for you. Like you need to, right. how are you going to get in your, how are you going to think for yourself? If you're, if you're, if you can't get other viewpoints about things, you're not thinking for yourself. It's, yep. It's so exactly. If knowledge is power, then how is reading a book harmful? That's right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. Really, awesome. Well, well, we'll wrap it up for today. But um, it was awesome, awesome seeing you. Yeah, we need to do awesome this again. speaking with you. I wanted, I wanted yes, we will. This. We will. I, I, I have I'll a, figure I have out a some lot questions. Of, 
I have a lot of stuff I can talk about. Perfect. So send me, send me your ideas of what you'd like to yeah. talk about for the next right. one. And we'll, we'll do another segment. That would be awesome. amazing for hopefully my women on yeah, Wednesday proposal gets approved. <laughs> Everybody in the, in the comments needs to like tell Mark. He, yeah, this is what happens on Wednesday. Claire, this is the one. Yeah, Wednesday. there you go. <laughs> well, we'll say thank you to everybody who joined us. Thank you, Catherine, for spending time with us today, helping people understand yeah. more of your story. Always a pleasure to speak with you. And again, just to reiterate, um, the interviews Catherine did with Aaron from Growing Up in Scientology and with Chris Shelton are linked in the video description below. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye. <laughs> Bye.